He has worked with Britpop veterans, Busley McFly and Mumford and Sons, captured the onstage antics of Glastonbury Festival. Who better to kick off Kings Bruton's very first episode of High Performance Podcast than the esteemed photographer, Mark Pitfall. Not only is he the man behind the camera, but often he finds himself under the limelight as a keen pursuer of local murmurations. Mark has cultivated his love for natural light and passion for music to go from the London College of Printing to being the creative director of his own very successful company. How did he develop his passion for design, become a photographer aficionado? Stick around and find out more. You're doing the best that you can do. It's a good question. Give me a second. Being the best you... I don't know. Being at the top of your game. Ah. <laughs> Communication. Showing up when no right. one else will. What is high performance? Best of your ability. Uh, Commitment uh, is key. High performance means... High performance with high performance is beyond the usual standard. High performance is a choice. So, what is high performance to you? I think high performance... Performance. I think within any industry, it is you work at your trade to the point where you almost don't have to think about it. So you can actually be creative. You can act in the moment. Um, so for, for weddings, they are very high pressured. Um, and it is important to have all the, t- all the technology completely under your belt. So you can actually be there to capture the moment. I think it's specifically the, the case for event photography, whether it's music or or weddings or parties. So how did you first get into photography? And was there anything that drew you to music photography specifically? Um, I started life as a designer. And um, part of that became more and more evident that I was getting involved in art direction. I've always been around photography my father was a very very keen photographer so I've always had cameras um, in the house and it's been a kind of important part part of my life Um, and at my when I did my foundation course I was very much kind of caught between design and photography and the head of design one so it it felt like a kind of natural progression to go from design to art direction to becoming a full-time photographer and if I'm really honest I wish I'd done it earlier you mentioned your father earlier. Um, him being an ornithologist, did this influence your career in any way? Well, it certainly inf- influenced my interest in studying of birds. And one of the things that I've loved um, being in Somerset is that we have on our doorstep Ham Wall and Shapwick Heath, which are the most amazing wetland areas where the starlings roost in their millions. So from, um, I think it's about November, right through to January, February, they congregate and and roost and move around those areas. And I tend to do a two-week kind of almost pilgrimage. So every dawn and every dusk, sequentially, I will go there because I will actually build up an idea of what they're doing. Um, And they are very different patterns. It, It is just the most incredible thing to witness. But like what your previous question to high performance, things happen very quickly. So you don't have time to think about how you're going to kind of set up your camera. You just have to know. And that for me is, is that again, that definition of being able to perform quickly and perform at a high level. When you were starting your career, did you find it challenging to believe in your abilities as an artist? I think... I mean, to, to, to start, I mean, starting off, <laughs> I think we're all of us, I was terrified. Um, um, but you do gain a belief, in, in, you know, partly because you, as a creative, you're pushing things forward. And, you, and it depends, you know, kind of how people react to it, if they're, if they're kind of positive. And it's a question of going, believing that what you're doing is of quality. And I guess it's also acquiring an element of gravitas as well. When someone, you know, you have five people that go, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And then you invariably you have someone over here going, no, I don't like it. And you have to believe that actually this is a personal thing. Creativity is personal. It is, you know, it is, it is, it is not one and one doesn't equal two in this. It's, it's something that you, that you feel you are asked as a professional to have an opinion about something. And you deliver that opinion. 
and you hope that people are going to kind of like it to the point where they will keep on wanting to use you. And I think that's kind of a very important part of the creative industry. So yes, I, you know, I, I, I now have a much stronger belief in, in my value and what, what I'm worth and able to choose whether I want to, to, to work on something or not. And for me, it's important to have fun. I mean, I, 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 I like, I think, as I say on my website, I think it's incredibly important. If you do not love what you're looking at, it's very, very difficult to actually convey that to others that wish to look at what you're creating. Would you say, you mentioned earlier about critics, would you say they've helped you kind of make you more driven as a photographer? I think any any form of criticism is is important. I mean, and, and, you know, it's important not to sort of disappear into a dark tunnel, but to actually rise above it and go, um, yeah, learn learn from it. Try and work out what possible aspect might have some sort of value. It won't always have value. Criticism... Creative criticism won't always have value. It is another opinion. It's not right or wrong. It's just someone saying, I like it or I don't, I don't, I don't like it. So it's important to go, well, well, okay, I can see your point. And to be able to go, yep, that's fine. I can do that better. And you add that to, then to your kind of, um, your, your high, high performance kind of system. So, so next time you're able to actually sort of deal, deal, deal with it better. With collaborations in mind, how have other people inspired you? I mean, some of the collaborations that kind of really make, mean most to me is actually probably within in, in my event work, where you are collaborating with other creatives to create this a, 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 perf, a, perfect, um, a perfect experience where photography is kind of part of it. An important part of it, because actually at the end of the day, that's what people have to remember the day by yet you are dealing with event managers florists lighting technicians whatever it might be um, and it's being able to, to bring your experience to actually say actually guys that won't work this will and or, or someone will come and say what about this as an idea and you and and to be able to go yes actually i think that's that's a really really kind of val valuable point and to actually, you know, it's important to, to, to go into these things with, with an open mind and to be able to kind of listen and assimilate other ideas into your, into your own palette of creativity. Would you say listening is kind of one of the key things you should have as a photographer? Listening and looking. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, way, the way I approach my particular photography, I'd like to think of myself as much more um, reportage. I mean, what I what I say to, to 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 people is, I am trying to capture the narrative of the day. I'm not trying to create a whole load of setup shots. I want to see the day unfold, um, and to find an interesting way of portraying that. So occasionally, I will get in and say, "No, that was that was an, just such an amazing moment." I'd like to kind of recreate it, maybe do do it slightly different, but otherwise, I'll just let it flow. And to do that successfully, you have to listen, but oh, you have to watch and you have to you have to read people's emotions. You can sense when something is about to happen and you think, right, OK, I think this is I'm talking more more about kind of weddings as, as, as an event or music. I don't know when I'm when I'm photographing at Glastonbury on stage, I don't know all the 50 bands that I have to cover. So I'm talking to them beforehand. I will speak to them about, is there something in your set that I think is that you'd like to have captured? So I try and kind of get myself pre-warned for anything that, that is going to be a bit bonkers. Um, and then it's a, a, a question of, of watching, watching the lighting people, watching the sound. Maybe one of the, one of the music, musicians' feedback mic is not working. You can see he's distressed. The last thing you want to do is... <laughs> get in the way of, 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 of that particular kind of moment. You see, kind of celebrate when things are kind of working. Most people just play up with me and it's just brilliant. But then occasionally you just have to go, you have to be aware and some, sometimes it, it, and just back off and, and, and let it unfold. So you talk about 
creating a story and being having the natural look in your photography. But with the rise of AI and it being able to generate any type of art, do you think this is the next evolution of art or does it, it, does it create a threat? I think AI, for me, is a, it's a tool. But if you actually so take my particular scenario, that things moving fluidly is, uh, and you're trying to capture reality, that's not something AI can do. If you actually want to do, do a staged image, that is something potentially that AI can manage better. But I still think it's, I think it's a long way off and I don't think you'll ever truly capture the ability to, to, <clears throat> to, to, to find and record human emotion and human interaction. It's more about, I, I, would, use, I would use it as a tool, possibly as a going back to be, being an art director. So if someone has, um, and this is more to do with modeling or theater work or something like that, where someone has a crazy idea um, and I would I would use that as possibly as a storyboard. You know, no longer would you have to to, to 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 physically draw out something. You could say, I've got this great idea. I want this person on this background, and you could create a series of stor stories, visual stories on Pinterest, and then share it with a client. That is a positive use of AI for me. All right. So are you ready for some quick fire questions? Go on. Go on. Yep. Okay. We'll kick off with this one. Okay. What are the three non-negotiable behaviours that people around you must buy into? They've got to pay on time. <laughs> um, they've got to be willing to um, to be themselves um, and be be part of and be part of a team. Mm. And what advice would you give to a teenage Mark just starting out? Just persevere, practice. <laughs> the great thing now is it doesn't cost to to do photography. When I started out, it was film, and it, it cost a lot of money to actually sort of take photographs and um, and and see your results. Now you have a kind of instant replay. So go out, practice, find something try and find something unique something of interest something that is a little bit different if you can um try and work with 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 people that inspire you um see you know even if it's just like you know going going in just to be part of a studio to um so you can actually see how people kind of perform um look at other artists and and photographers not just photographers be immerse yourself in creativity it's it's it, there's so much out there that can in, that can in, that can influence you um and i guess the biggie for uh, the young the young mark would be would be we are awash with image technology everyone can take pictures Everyone has the capability of taking good pictures. But to actually take good pictures most of the time is more of the challenge. And the way to achieve that is to work at it. Um, how did you react to your greatest failure or setback? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, do you know, I wish I could touch wood. Because, the, I mean, the, the, the thing that would be most challenging would be for a, for a disc to fail and that is that that is my horror and so with 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 all my technology um i shoot with you know like an important wedding my cameras have two discs in them so if one disc goes down i have a backup disc and that is that is that is something that is kind of very very difficult um i've only once made a mistake and it's a calendar mistake and I was absolutely mortified I was kind of brought out that, that, that you if you say you're going to do something you do it and it's that's a really important part of my own personal brand is to be reliable um, and so as you get busy 
make sure that you have a really good system because actually letting someone down is is a really really is not a good thing to do and i think you know it wasn't a, a big deal and actually what i did was i was able to say look come back another day and i will do the shoot for you free and it was all fine um but uh i think on a smaller scale you can get very very kind of focused on something that that you that really takes your attention and and you're actually missing the main event here so it's always be kind of aware i mean especially like you know today today when when the the the, the, the athletics there's so many things going on and i'm exhausted by just kind of <laughs> looking to see kind of kind of what's going on and actually and 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 challenging so thinking slightly different ways of kind of shoot, shooting it as well so kind of exploring not don't be afraid to explore different ideas and last but not least if you could give one golden rule for the high performance life what would that be i would say look after yourself because if you don't you can't perform at a high level so give yourself time to to pause so when you are in the frame that you can kind of work to the the, the, the highest level that, that you, you you can possibly achieve and always prepare don't wing it mm. be prepared just be prepared check your equipment check your batteries make sure everything is 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 charged make sure that you've got enough cards make sure your lens is clean little things that that once the, everything starts going you don't have time to do it's a bit like in the in old film it's like hair in the gate there was one person who would kind of always be watching to make sure because actually the film would be ruined if there's like a little hair kind of wait waving around if there's a piece of dust in the middle of your lens it's you know, it's it's a nightmare if i i do fashion shoots where i'm producing 2000 shots for a collection if there's a piece of dust on the sensor that is days of post production to get rid of it i think that'd be my worst nightmare if i <laughs> found out that happened yeah so it's be prepared you know it's it's it's, it's um, and uh, yeah it's a brilliant job i absolutely love it but it is it is it is hard work um and you know as long as i innately feel that it's kind of fun and i'm i'm achieving and working with interesting people then i i will i will continue to to to, to soldier on and uh, and enjoy myself oh well thank you so yeah, much for thank you. giving up your time to be interviewed yeah it's my pleasure <laughs> you've definitely given us some very useful tips that we will i'm sure everyone listening as well will um <laughs> take on fantastic yeah. well I, I you know you you, you guys are the future so i wish you all the luck enjoy been a great kickoff to the high performance podcast thank you very much you're welcome thank, thank you, you.